Hey there, a common sight nowadays, isn't it? But how do you think that this tiny amount of liquid that is getting injected, called the vaccine, can save us from deadly diseases? Well, a vaccine is a substance that activates the body's immune system and prepares it to fight against pathogens. Wait, pathogens? What's that you ask me? Huh? Well, these are teeny weeny things that are not visible to the naked eye and these things can actually enter our body and cause diseases. Actually, pathogens range from fungi to parasites to bacteria to viruses. But for today, let's focus our discussion around viruses. More specifically, SARS-CoV-2. Now, the COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 virus is a super, super, super small infectious agent. Just to understand how tiny these little things are, this guy, a mathematician named Matt Parker, calculated that the total amount of coronaviruses that had infected 5 crore people in the world by the end of 2020 was equal to just 1 teaspoon in volume. Yup, all that danger and wickedness when tightly packed together amounts to a volume of only 8 ml. Can you believe that? Now, let's see how something so tiny can have an adverse effect on our health. But for that, I will have to shrink myself to one millionth or drop my size to one over 10 lakh. Whoa, everything seems so huge here. Even though viruses actually come in different shapes and sizes, Essentially, they're just packages of genetic material, that's DNA or RNA, inside a protein shell. Now, talking about SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19, the outermost layer is the viral envelope. This layer is actually made up of fats or lipids and proteins get embedded into them. As you know, soap actually breaks these fats. That is why washing our hands with soap renders these viruses ineffective. Now, embedded in that fatty layer are three different types of protein. But what I am interested in is this protein that I am highlighting, which is the spike protein, which actually helps that virus to bind to a healthy human cell. Now, strip that envelope, another protein layer called the capsid is present. Strip that, you find the nucleic protein or the end protein onto which RNA or the genetic material is Pound. Once this virus enters the body, it lands on top of a naive host cell. The real damage begins once the outer spike protein actually latches on to the receptors on the surface of the cell in our respiratory tract, like two matching Lego blocks. This binding triggers the cell to think that the virus is one of its own and lets the virus fuse with itself. At this time, the viral envelope merges with the membrane of the cell, allowing the virus to inject the RNA inside. Now, the viral RNA hijacks the cellular machinery. RNA codes proteins. Remember central dogma? The cells instead of making body proteins, starts making these viral proteins, which are those ones that we spoke about earlier. The RNA also replicates. At this stage, the naive human cell has actually created all the raw materials that is required to construct a new virus. The result, a human cell filled with copies of the virus. This is uh, somewhat like tricking the enemy's recruitment facility into hiring troops for your own army. One cell can actually make millions of copies of that virus before all the viruses burst out of that particular cell, leaving it dead. 
Now, these viruses go on to infect other cells. All tragic? No, hold on. This is where our immune system comes to our rescue. The immune system has a whole army of microscopic assassins that prevent these viruses from turning our body into a virus manufacturing unit factory. Now, the immune system responds in two ways in order to protect us. One, the innate or non-specific immunity and two, the adaptive or specific immunity. Let's talk about innate immunity first. As the name suggests, this kind of immunity is there from birth and is non-specific, which means that it responds to all kinds of pathogens in the same way. Ultimate job, kill the pathogen. The need here is to actually get into action very, very quickly. In fact, as soon as the pathogens are detected, think about this type of immunity as more bran and less brain. The cells of the innate immunity go berserk as soon as they know that there are pathogens around. They are like these mad assassins trying to start killing anything and everything around them, including own body cells. Well, we know that this kind of madness cannot go on for long. It will harm us more than doing good. In fact, there are mechanisms that keep this under control. You know that this kind of immunity is actually not connected to the understanding of vaccines. So, to learn more about innate immunity, you can go to Baiju's The Learning app. Now, getting back. Next up, the second type. We have the adaptive or acquired immunity. These immune cells are not present at birth. They develop more slowly and require the body to learn the wily ways of the pathogen before it can defeat it. This is more brain than bran. Adaptive immunity identifies specific pathogens and destroys them. In fact, this is the first step in any good defense strategy to be able to tell friend from foe. And in the case of our immune system, that means being able to identify own body cells from pathogens. This is done by identifying certain specific molecules such as proteins or glycolipids on the pathogen. These specific identifier molecules are called by a special name. And uh, there is a high chance that uh, you would have heard this name as well. It's called antigen. In case of the coronavirus, the spike protein that we spoke about is what gives away its identity. As soon as this antigen is discovered, the adaptive immunity or the adaptive immune system actually gets all riled up. To see the adaptive immune system in action, first stop, lymph node. This is where the intelligent part of our immune system resides, introducing the B lymphocyte, which is the spy of our adaptive immune system. Its job is to spot and mark the intruders that need to be neutralized. For this job, the B lymphocyte is equipped with a lot of different shapes of protein receptors called antibodies on its cell surface. A fully mature B lymphocyte displays at least 10,000 different antibodies on its surface. Different is the cool thing about them. Every lymphocyte has its own set of antibodies ready to identify and bind to a particular antigen, like a key and lock. Very, very specific. So, Talking of all the lymphocytes put together, it's like having 2 billion keys on your immune system's keychain, each of which can actually open only one door or bind only to one antigen. As soon as the match happens, all hell breaks loose. The B lymphocytes sends out distress signals alerting the cells of the identity and location of the antigen. Post this, a cascade of events occur. A full-blown attack is launched on the pathogens. The pathogens neutralized. Body saved. 
This matchmaking process is actually a race against time. Till the matchmaking happens, the innate immune system or the innate immune cells keep fighting mindlessly like we had spoken about before, but are not in a position to completely neutralize all the pathogens. Even now, the pathogens are continuously replicating in the body and wrecking havoc. So, faster the matchmaking process, better it is for the body. Sometimes, this matchmaking process happens within a few hours. Sometimes, a few days. Or, it may not happen at all, in which case, the pathogen is victorious. In a good case scenario, when it does find a match, along with alerting other immune cells and going in for a full kill, some of the B lymphocytes also go on to become a long-lasting memory cell. Memory cells registers the shape of the antibody that matched with the antigen. So, in case the same antigen and thereby the same pathogen is encountered again, the response is quicker and our body is able to eliminate the pathogen quickly. And this is exactly what vaccines aim to achieve. Objective is to expose the body to these antigens before the actual pathogens get entry into the body. Different kinds of vaccines expose the pathogen in different ways to the body. Uh, it could either be in a weakened or a dead state. Sometimes just the antigen part of the pathogen is exposed to the body. And a new technique called the mRNA vaccines can also be designed or developed for this. But all of these have the same end result. That is, triggering the B lymphocytes response without actually causing the disease. When you take the jab, the B lymphocytes get into action, finds the match, creates the memory cells that are required so that in case, just in case of an exposure to the actual pathogen, your body can go kill that pathogen full on ninja style.